Hi everyone, welcome to our lesson today where we're talking about isosceles triangle proofs and some equilateral triangle proofs. So let's take a look. We are going to start off with the isosceles triangle theorem and it says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, and I'm going to mark this up as I talk about it, okay, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the opposite, um, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So if I have these two sides being congruent, then the angle opposite that angle, the first angle here, would be this angle. The angle opposite this side would be here. It's saying then those two angles are congruent to each other as well. We actually already know this, but this is officially what the isosceles triangle theorem is. And notice, it's talking about going from sides to angles. If I have two sides are congruent, then their opposite angles are also congruent to each other. Then we have the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, which we should remember the converse just simply means we flip the hypothesis and conclusion. So this one says if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent to each other. So the converse is when we go from angles to sides. Okay, and kind of the way you can put this together is when you first learned about an isosceles triangle, probably back in third grade, you didn't learn about the two angles being congruent first. You always learned about two congruent sides. So that's what the um, isosceles triangle theorem is, going from sides and then talking about the angles. The converse would be about the angles first. And so those are going to be now reasons we might be able to use in a proof. All right, so let's take a look at this first proof here. It says triangle WXZ is isosceles. XY bisects angle WXZ. So that's the information that we're given. We want to prove that these two smaller triangles are congruent to each other. So we know isosceles is going to clearly mean that we have two sets of sides that are congruent. And we know that if a segment is bisecting an angle, then we're going to have two congruent angles because of the definition of an angle bisector. And I put all of this out there because we already know now from doing so many other proofs that when we see what we're given, we should already be thinking about what kind of next steps that's going to tell us to do. So I would be able to say that, well, okay, since it's isosceles, Wx is congruent to Zx, isosceles triangle theorem. And then those two angles are congruent to each other. Wxy is congruent to Zxy. Now, I think you probably can see, I definitely have a statement missing in this proof. Right now, I only have a set of side and angles that match up. We should know that, hey, these two triangles share XY. So I'm actually gonna add that in. Segment XY is congruent to segment XY. Okay, oops, teachers make mistakes too, guys. And I'm not even taking this out of the video because there's no point. And we should hopefully know that that is your reflexive property. So that is technically what statement four should be. And then of course, we're able to say that these two triangles are congruent by side angle side. So, okay, so notice we use the isosceles triangle theorem in this proof. If I say that a triangle is isosceles, we're able to say that the two sides are congruent. Okay, so now the next proof that we're going to take a look at is this one here. So we've got a couple of things already given to us. CD is congruent to CG. We're also given that DE is congruent to GF. And we're trying to prove that side CE, excuse me, is congruent to side CF. Now notice that these are the sides, the third side of these two triangles that we are trying to prove are congruent to each other. Um, and if we can prove that these two um, triangles are congruent to each other possibly, then maybe we're gonna be able to tell more about it. But what we really wanna be able to see here is that the big triangle is definitely isosceles. Um, we have two sides that are marked congruent. These two mini triangles so far have the same sets of two sides. So this is interesting. Now, what we can then say is, well, since the big triangle here is isosceles, then my two base angles are congruent. So angle D is congruent to angle G. Because again, this big triangle is isosceles, and so if the sides are congruent, then the opposite angles are congruent. 
And remember, if you're going from sides to angles, that is your isosceles triangle theorem. Now, notice what I can say about these two little skinny triangles. This skinny triangle up top and this one at the bottom, those two triangles are definitely now congruent to each other, and that's by side angle side. And since these two skinny triangles are congruent to each other, then the remaining side that's not marked up, CE and CF, are congruent because, remember, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Next one here. We are trying to prove that AB is congruent to CB. So if AB and CB are congruent, we're trying to prove that basically this triangle is isosceles, which is going to happen here. So first we are given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So something we need to see is, you know, how are we going to relate it back up here? Now, some kind of game planning. So angle 2 and angle 3, we should remember those are vertical angles. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because of the vertical angles theorem. So then this angle 3 is the same here. And then notice what we would really love to say is then, well, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And remember, that's your transitive property. Okay, It's actually your transitive property of congruence because we're using our congruent symbols. And now look, if these two angles are congruent, then I can make this last statement. My opposite sides are congruent. Now remember, going from angles to sides, that is the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. When you go from proving that the angles to the opposite sides are congruent, that is the converse of that theorem. Last proof of this general skill. So here we are given that MO is parallel to NP. So these two segments are congruent. We're given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. We want to prove that LN is congruent to LP. So we're trying to prove that the entire left-hand side is congruent to the entire right-hand side. So first of all, what we should notice is there are parallel lines, and we can definitely make a statement about angle 1 and angle 3, angle 2 and angle 4, because remember, those are corresponding angles. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, and that's your corresponding angles postulate or theorem. So now that means that these angles are congruent to each other. And now look, angle 3 and angle 4 are the angles to side LP, Angle 4 is the opposite angle to side LN, and that's what we're going to want. But before we do that, we want to say, well, hey, angle 3 is definitely congruent to angle 4, and that's on my transitive property, okay? Because notice angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and so I'm putting angle 3 in and angle 4 in. And then since I'm talking about angles being congruent to their opposite sides being congruent, that is the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Now, equilateral triangle proofs. So things we just, we know about equilateral triangles, but we actually use these reasons in our proof. A triangle is equilateral if and only if it is equally angular. So equilateral means congruent sides, equally angular, okay? That means just equal angles. And each angle of an equilateral triangle measures 60 degrees. So every side is congruent in a triangle, every angle is congruent to each other, and then by definition, since triangles add up to 180, all the angles must be 60. Like, you have no other choice. The sides could be whatever. They could be 3, 3, 3. They could be 5, 5, 5. They could be 8.2, 8.2, 8.2. The angle measures are always 60. Okay, and we're going to use these uh, reasons in our proofs. Okay, I'm going to enlarge my screen just a bit because I have a blank area here. Okay, so here it says triangle ABC is equilateral and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. There's actually a few different ways we can attack this proof, so this is just one possible example. So if I know that triangle ABC is equilateral, and notice what I'm going to have to try to prove here. I'm going to try to prove that ADB, this angle here, is congruent to CDB, this angle here. And possibly then, if I want to prove that these two angles are congruent, Maybe I want to prove that the top triangle is congruent to the bottom triangle. And so far, I've got one pair of angles that match up. Well, look at, you know, all of these angles here. If it's equilateral, then I know that segment AB is congruent to segment BC, right? Because and Which is also congruent to segment AC, but I kind of don't need that in my proof right now. And that's because all equilateral triangles have congruent sides. 
Um, and then I can say that, well, hey, BD is congruent to BD because of the reflexive property. Oops. And so now I have enough information to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other by side angle side. And therefore, since the two triangles are congruent by side angle side, I can say that one of the pairs of angles that is not marked up is congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, another method would have been to say, well, hey, I know angle A and angle C are congruent to each other because all the angles of an equilateral triangle are congruent. And I could have then proved by angle side angle. So that would have just been another possible um, thing I could have done. I also could have proved without proving this side and done angle angle side. If I prove that angle A was congruent to angle C, I have these angles here and this side um, DB. So it's really up to you, but no matter what, you're going to get your right answer. And our last one, triangle ABC is equilateral and segment PQ is parallel to segment BC. So I need to prove that APQ, this angle here, is equilateral. All right. So ABC is equilateral, and I have to prove that the tr smaller triangle here is equilateral. So some things we definitely know. If ABC is equilateral, then all of those angles are equal to 60. Again, this is just one possible way to do this proof. I could have said that the measure of angle A is, I'm sorry, that you know angles A, B, and C are all congruent to each other instead of talking about the measure, but it's just another way to do this. And then I can say, well, angle one is congruent to angle B, right? So angle one is congruent to angle B and angle two is congruent to angle C because of the corresponding angles postulate because notice they are corresponding angles with those uh, parallel lines. Then I can say, well, then the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two, which is equal to 60 by substitution. So I could go ahead and replace what I know the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two is with 60 because the measure of angle one was congruent to B, which is 60. The measure of angle two is congruent to angle C, which also has a measure of 60. And therefore, if those two are 60, then the remaining angle has to be 60. And that would be my reason because all the angles add up are 60 degrees, which makes an equilateral triangle. Pretty good. There definitely could have been other ways or extra steps you could have done in this proof. I kind of just went right to the point. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.